Last year, following a very simple moment of realizing that I am what I have been looking for, my practice has become rather irregular, often seemingly against my own wishes. It just seems that at times practice is counterproductive, making me less present in my life rather than more so. This has brought me to some uncomfortable realizations about the ways practice has often served as a means of feeling in control, what, whether, uh, whether of my feelings, of my thoughts, or of the process of spiritual enfoldment in self. Currently, what seems to happen are brief phases where some practice here and there feels right and helpful. Then, at a certain point, it starts to seem like a hindrance, and I get a message that it's time to take a break. I think I'm struggling with two, maybe three things here. I love it when people do this for me. They kind of summarize the question, one, two, like these bullet point things. It's really helpful for me. So thank you for doing that, Ben. Um, here are three things. One. Difficult to trusting that this process is actually coming from a true place in me and is not going to derail me in some ways. I, I get that, you know, when we're really sort of letting go and we're, when we're starting to assume a more intuitive relationship with our own spirituality, with our practice, um, and we're not just in some sort of cookie cutter, here's how exactly how you do it sort of mode. Um, it's, 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 um, you do go through a process of what exactly am I trusting here or what can I trust here? Uh, the second question, what it means to be engaged with spirituality in a meaningful way that is almost not entirely, not centered on formal practice. And the third question, the idea that I may not be in control of this process at all, <laughs> uh, which is really a restatement of the first one. You, have you had any thoughts or advice on these sticking points? So many, especially when we get to a certain point in spirituality, and really all along the way, um, the paradoxes here just mount one after the other, after the other, after the other. And the paradoxes are only kind of created in our minds, because our minds, our, our thinking minds, the way that mind is, right? Not only your mind, but my mind too. It's the nature of conceptual thinking mind. When we go to conceptual thinking mind, conceptual thinking mind is very good at either or thinking. It's this or it's that. It's not so, so it's not as easy for our mind to go, it's this and it's that, when this and that seem to be completely contradictory. How can those two things be simultaneously present and happening and true and real at the same time? And our conceptual minds has a very hard time with that. But there is our deeper mind um, where we access and Zen what would be called prajna, kind of transcendental wisdom, where, where we're utilizing the mind, not, not necessarily conceptual thought, but the intelligence innate within mind in, in a bigger sense. And that can embrace paradox. So why am I talking about paradox? Let's go back to the, a couple of questions within the question. So, uh, as Ben said, he had a shift where he noticed that I am what I've been seeking. And I like the way he put that following a, a very simple moment of realization. A very simple moment of realization. Um, I want to emphasize that for a moment because we tend to think that realizations are always going to be like explosive and, you know, we read about the stuff that's the most impressive sounding, you know, but that, oh, it, that leaves a kind of false impression, too, that that's the way it always shows up. Um, sometimes parts of awakening show up in this, um, as, as Ben said, a kind of um, the simple moment of realization, realizing that I am what I've been looking for. And even though it's a sort of simple moment of realization as for Ben, it's actually a, it's actually at a deeper level, it's, it's, it's kind of immense, even if it doesn't feel immense. Sometimes these kind of realizations can feel just immense and even overwhelming at times. And sometimes they can feel 
you know, insignificant and important and transformative, but also at the same time kind of simple. Like, oh, I'll be darned. I never, I never got it that I am what I've been looking for. I'll be darned. You know, something like that. It doesn't always have to be earth shattering. Um, and interesting things happen in the wake of that. And they're different for different people. There are commonalities, but within those commonalities are unique unfoldments of each person. There's another, there's a paradox right there. Um, it often calls practice or how we're approaching practice into question. If I am what I'm seeking, and not just intellectually pondering this, but actually experiencing, I am what I've been seeking, then our mind kind of at some point often goes, well, why am I practicing again? Where am I going? What am I trying to achieve? What am I, if I am what I'm seeking, what am I doing with all this practice now? It's a very common thing for people to go through, you know, especially after we have a shift, like I said, where we see some version of I am what I've been seeking. Now, what in the heck am I seeking for? And what is spiritual practice that's not a form of seeking? I think for most, you, most people that are engaged in spiritual practice, a lot of it for a long time is sort of a formalized way of seeking, even though we might be told, don't seek seek, don't use meditation as a form of, you know, engaging your seeking mind and all that. Those are all great teachings, for sure. And yet, when we're sitting there and we're doing it, you know, and we're, we're sitting there for a reason, and we are seeking something, uh, until we're not. Until maybe we realize we are what we're seeking. Now, when we realize that, that doesn't mean that the spiritual life is over, that we've realized everything there is to say, see, and that we just sort of fold our, you know, spiritual practice tent and ride away into the sunset. That's not the way it happens. Again, we're going to be embracing a sort of paradox. Yes, what awakening, whether great or small, shows us is that we are what we've been seeking. We are the peace. We are the freedom. Uh, we are the clarity. We are the love. We are what we've been seeking. That's part of awakening. And, um, and even though we are what we've been seeking, so, which is a way of kind of realizing you're, 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 you're the totality, in a sense. Not as an ego, you're not the totality. That would be a disaster if we thought that. <laughs> but, but also, so we transcend our little, little human, little me, right? Little, little old me, little old Adya, going through life, doing the best he can. We transcend that in our, in our deeper, broader understanding, realizations. But they're still little old Aja, little old human being bumbling their way through life. <laughs> now you have this, this realization that you are what you're seeking. And now you're like, okay, I am what I'm seeking. And yet, I think if we really feel intuitively, very, very honestly, inside um you realize that they haven't crossed some cosmic finish line it's not over all these are ways that our minds kind of construct the game of spirituality You're like i'm going to get to this place and then when i get to this place i'm going to be in such a wonderful state then i'll you know i won't have to do everything that got me there and I'll just be sort of swimming in this state of realization forevermore, you know? It's a nice myth, but um, it's not quite the way it works out. No matter how much we want to believe in that myth, it's not really the way it works out. So when we start to let go of some of this sort of cookie cutter way we're approaching our practice, which at a certain point is it's very useful actually, especially when we begin, you know? Um, it's kind of useful just to get on something that's very straightforward, 
directed, you know what you're doing, you know, and you're committed to it. As you come more into yourself, doing this in a cookie cutter way won't probably make a whole lot of sense at a certain point anymore. And certainly being out there as the ardent spiritual seeker striving to have an experience, if, our, if we've had a deep enough realization, that won't make sense any, anymore either. And so you'd think, well, what am I meditating? What am I inquiring? What am I practicing for? Well, you're practicing because there's no end to this. And so it can be difficult trusting a process that you're now taking at a little more intuitive kind of level. You're not just on this sort of cookie cutter thing. So you're transitioning from a, from a, this idea of what you're doing or this commitment to a certain way of practicing, let's say every day. And now you've come into a realization that like turns all that upside down. You don't know why you're doing it anymore and, or what the approach is. I can remember going through this phase myself. Uh, I had a big opening, first big opening at 25. And I didn't have a, I didn't sit around thinking that I didn't need to do any practice anymore. I certainly knew that I wasn't clear enough to be even thinking of that. But it was weird that I, I knew that I am what I was seeking. And yet I knew there was, there was still more to realize. There was still more to grow. Um, and, and yet, how do I engage in my spiritual practice when not as a form of seeking? And at the beginning, it wasn't intuitively obvious. Like, what does that mean? When you seem to take the very reasons for practice and your own realization kind of, you know, did away with them. Well, there's a way that we, then we need to sort of reorient and we need to redefine practice and what it is and why we're doing it. And, and this is a different steps along our own realization. We'll come into this, a redefinition of what we're doing and why we're doing it. And, it. and it has to be relevant in the sense that our practice is fitting where we are spiritually at that moment. So what I came to as I realized, like outside of this old mindset that can see things in a sort of a goal-oriented frame, which just didn't make sense at a certain point, that the nature of, it's almost like the nature of true nature is innately curious, right? It's innately uh Curious, it's, it's innately expansive in the sense of, by expansive, I don't necessarily mean expansive in, in some, in, in a spatial sense, large or small, but I mean in the sense, if, if it's always, there's an instinct within our true nature to always be diving into the mystery of itself, right? of true nature itself not to get to a goal, not for a particular, then I will achieve something and then all that, that's the mythology. That's not how it works. As long as we're looking at it in that frame, we look forever. We've got at some point to get it out of that frame. And almost look at it from the standpoint of true nature.